Hey everybody, what's matter here, and welcome to part four of my Umineko Let's Play. In the last episode, we saw a little bit of the hints of the uh, family drama, especially between Natsui and Ava, as we learn why there's this uh, animosity towards them, and then discussing money, things got heated, as expected, and there was also talk about uh, this thing about all of this gold being hidden. Uh, in somewhere in the islands that the witch uh, bestowed upon the grandfather. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I imagine we're going to be having a little bit of an awkward rest of the night after that blow up that happened between the adults and then, you know, the kids coming in and not knowing what happened. So I'm excited to see more of this drama. So let's go ahead and let's get back into the story. Ooh, the music is very foreboding here. There we go, this legend of the so now all of these people, both the kids, to a degree, and the adults are all after this pot of gold, literally. お父様はそれを指して、十トン分あると取るにもったらない。存在戦黄金に穴いな軍資金を集まらへんで。会長さんはせいぜんその真摯なお人柄であれだけ大勢の財界人から尊敬を集めたお人や。詐欺の片棒なんか勝つがへん。兄貴、マ
あるいはお前たちのために言い出したのかもしれないななのにありもしない黄金を遺産分配に含めて議論しようというバカな息子たちが現れる And again, he's saying this, but then he, to have that whole thing inscribed underneath a painting, that seems a little going too far considering that only the family would see that、uh, inscription under the painting. I don't know. Feels like I can't trust Krauss. Of course, he has a reason to, to lie. Doza. Masaka, o my m o t h e Konna de Chiange, or Shinji de Rut de Yun Janai da Ro. Oh, poor Rosa. <laughs> I feel so bad for her. Other than Natsu, I feel, most, I feel most for Rosa just being dragged into this and being like almost having the older siblings play her against each other. But I feel so bad for her. Other than Natsu, I feel most, I feel most for Rosa just being dragged into this. お前たちはこう言いたいわけかね私が黄金を独り占めしようとしていると兄さんが莫大な軍資金を調達したのは事実それがお父様の個人資産の横領では断じてありえないというなら like, つまりはそういうことよ Is that what she's gonna say? 兄貴はすでに10トンの金塊を見つけてるんじゃないかって<笑>俺たちはそう見てるのさバカバカしいそんなものは元より存在しないじゃあ説明なさいよお父様の財産の横領お父様の隠し黄金そのどちらでもないならどうやってあれだけの軍資金を調達できたっていうの私にも政界財界に友人が多くいてね彼らから協力を得ただけに過ぎんよそれについてお前たちに説明する義務はない分かっているだろう話せぬ方面の筋もある兄貴がそうだと言い張るんならそれでいいさでもよ兄貴親父は長くない来年の今日まで生きてるなんて誰にも保証できねえんだぜ親父が死ねばその時点で遺産相続だ俺たちは全員の立場から中立な弁護士と会計士を立てて親父の財政状況を調査させるぜその時お父様の資産に兄さんが不当な干渉をしていることが発覚したならお分かりね何の話だかさっぱり分からんで They're probably hoping that,、uh... <laughs> Secretly, that he has embezzled because then he'd be going to jail and he probably would forfeit his part of the inheritance. Sumo de noctemo funga is tai kimochi da. Oto san no ogon wa mochiron oto san no zai san ya. Omote ni dasen kane ya chu no mo wakato. Shikashi, yonin ni kohe na kendi ga aru hazu ya. Tsumari. 兄貴が黄金を独り占めしていないかどうか兄貴についても財務状況を調査させてもらうぜってことなのさいい機会じゃない兄さんの言うところの友人知人にバックアップしてもらったというところを証明なさいよそうすれば兄さんは潔白私たちはくだらない疑いを持ってしまったことを潔く謝れるわねえローザーそうねクラウス兄さんこそ話をはぐらかしてるわやましいところがないと言うなら証明してくれればいいだけの話なのに兄さんはまるで取り合おうとしてくれないだがまあ兄貴の立場にも配慮するさ親父の名代ということで俺たちより一つ多く責任を背負ってるところもあるだろう今まで散々気楽に過ごしてきた俺たちがそれを察しないでブーブー言うのはこりゃフェアな話じゃないぜほうさっきから落とされたり持ち上げられたりと忙しい本題に入りたまえつまりなお父さんの財産をあれこれ調べて重箱の墨をつっつくんはブスやないかって話なんやクラウス兄さんの言う通り
うまく説明できん金の動きもあるやろそこを理解した上でわしらは兄さんに相談を持ってきたんや It almost like feels like、uh, Hideyoshi is the good cop and Ava is the bad cop. お互いにとって悪うない相談や。相談ほう。遺産分配時に、今日まで親父の面倒を見てきてくれた兄貴のご苦労を最大限に汲み取り、分配に寛大な理解を示そうってことさ。間違いないでよ。別に私たちの権利を放棄するって言って。てるわけじゃないのよただその権利を主張する際に兄さんの立場に立った寛大な理解があってもいいんじゃないかしらということなのよつまり条件を飲んでくれたらわしらは遺産分配時にお父さんの財務状況調査をクラス兄さんに一任してもいいっちゅうこっちゃ。All the siblings from Ava downward suspected that Krauss was trying to steal their father's wealth. In that situation, letting Krauss report on the state of their father's wealth by himself was extremely contradictory and a huge concession. If, as they claimed, Krauss was actually embezzling money, Krauss would be able to hide that fact. There's got to be a reason why they're going to let him be able to look into the financial situation. There's got to be. That seems like a big give on their part. Besides that, it would also be possible for him to control the distribution of the inheritance in a manner favorable to himself. Krauss, also realizing that this sounded too good to be true, couldn't help but feel doubt. Press X to doubt on that one. He had to worry about whether th what they would ask in return for such a compromise. Ho. <laughs> Ho. Sin Yo Zero no Watashi ni, Chou Kei to Shite no Shin Rai o Kae Shite Kure Ru to Yu no Ka. Sono Mi Kae Ri wa Nan da ne? 同じ兄弟としての公平な権利さ俺たちの兄貴は親父の財産をかすめ取るようなやつじゃないだがしかし兄貴に融資するパトロンも存在しないとなりゃつまりこういうことなら兄弟は納得するわけさ兄さんは10トンの黄金を見つけそれを担保に軍資金を作ったそうお父様がかつてそうしたようにねそういうことならお父さんの財務状況におかしな点は一切あらへんクラス兄さんはずっとお父さんの世話してきた高校息子やそないなお人を信用せんわけにはいかへん回りくどくて分かりづらいなもっとはっきり具体的に言いたまえ条件の一つ目まず兄貴は親父の黄金を見つけていたことを認めることありもしない黄金を私が持っていると認めろと条件にその黄金について兄弟の取り分を認めこれを支払うことバカな What if all the adults died and the kids just got all the gold in the end and then they just went off and were just good kids and just like lived their lives and didn't hurt anybody I kind of want that way. I kind of want it to go that way. Ari mo shi nai 200 ok no ongon ni tsui te hitori atama 50 ok. Gouke 150 ok o shiharae to yu no ka. Baka baka shi. Saigo ma de kiki na are. Sonai taikin dede kur no wa wakatto. Deke hen tori ki wa suru tsumori nai de. Mochiron ongon no tori bun ni tsui te mo. Klaus ni san no kunnichi ma de no gokuro o jiubun ni negiratte kansan suru tsumori ya. Jouken san. Ogon no bunpai wa Ushiromi ya honke toushu atotsugi no katagaki ni 50%. Nokuri o kyodai no seitou na toribun toshite bunkatsu. Mochiron, Klaus ni san mo kore ni wa fukumeru wa yo. 200 ok no uchi. 125 ok o aniki ni. 25億をエバネーさんに25億を俺に25億をローザにありがたくて涙が出る分配じゃないか存在しない黄金のためにお前たちに75億支払えと言うのかね何よ兄さんの取り分は私たちの5倍じゃない私なら踊り上がっちゃう好条件よ <laughs> It'd be funny if, in the end,、uh, the 
Like at the last moment, all of this happened, and then the grandfather dies, and or their father dies, and then realize that he just like in the will, he just didn't give any of them any of it. Maybe he gave it all to. I don't know, uh, what's the butler's name? What if he just gave it all to the butlers? Like, fuck all of you kids, you're all just waiting for me to die so you can get your money. You are a disappointment, and you're just money hungry, so screw it, you don't get any of it. Like, I get it, the dad's a dick, but... Man, I'm just like in that position, I'm just imagining I'm upstairs just dying, and my kids are all downstairs squabbling about, you know, like my, my body, I'm not even dead yet, and they're already just thinking about what they get out of it. I'd be, I'd be pissed too. I would, I, I might be spiteful enough to just be like, screw it, none of you will get any money. Or you get like, there's a whole thing about the wills where you have to be careful if you don't give your family anything, uh, because they can contest it. But if you write clearly in the will, like you get like five dollars, then, and if you contest that, then you get nothing. Or like something that's a little bit more reasonable, you get like, a hundred thousand dollars, and if you try to contest it, I'll take that away from you as well. Shiharai wa lainen san gatsu made da. Do ya, Klaus Nissan? Otousan no zaisan wo meguru shindai wo kaifuku suru zekkou no chance ya nai ka. Sasuga ni nanaji wo goku no taikin wa otousan ga nakunatta kara ya nai to muri yaro. And here's the thing, like. It's not like these people are all hurting. They're all like very comfortable. But I guess you just. It's never enough. It's just like once you have a lot of money, you just want more money. Danga, Tetsuke no nana oku han wa nanto ka dekin koto mo nain to chau ka? Han toshi de nana oku ってのはちょいと shindoi hanashi da ga, seikai zaikai ni yujin ga oi ってのが自慢の兄貴なら nanto ka dekiru daro. 本当なら、今すぐ七十五億を一括で払ってもらいたいところよ。でも兄さんの立場に配慮して、とりあえず一割を納める誠意を見せてくれたら、残りの九割は、遺産分配時に持ち越してくれていいってことなの。ね一割程度の誠意なら、兄さんにだって示せるんじゃない親父殿の財政状況調査を私に一任する権利を七億五千万で売りつけようというのかね。<笑>上等じゃないか。お前たちも成長したものだ。この私に取引を持ちかけられるようになるとは。これらを兄さんが飲むなら、私たち兄弟はお父様の財産状況調査を兄さんに一任する。ただし、その調査結果は公弁の対象となる。当然よね。七十五億分、私たちの取り分が減るように調整されちゃったら悲しいもの。原則的に文句は言わねえつもりだ。兄貴が綺麗にやってくれたならそれでいい。よっぽど露骨なことをしなければ、俺たちはことを荒立てるつもりなんかねえんだぜ。俺たちだって早く遺産は欲しい。いつまでもグダグダして取りっぱぐれたくねえんだ。公弁された場合の再調査は誰がするのかね。<笑>兄さんでいいわ。多分これが兄弟で合議する最初で最後の機会だもの。そんなことにはならないと信じてる。<笑>ローザもたまには言うわね。That Krauss was not trusted whatsoever as the oldest sibling was by now so obvious that it requires no explanation. The formerly tyrannical older brother or oldest brother would always abuse his privileges and infringe upon the other siblings' shares. In response to that, the other three, now adults, were for the first time striking back at him by working together. Yeah, it sounds like they had, like, probably since the year that they last got together, it seems like they've just been strategizing this, where they're like, we've been looking into the fin finances, we've come up with this plan together. Mm, okay, here is here is me talking about the will, where it just turns out if they're like 
俺たちは本当に黄金が出てこようがどうでもいいことさ。俺たちの取り分は先払いってな感じになるわけだからな。夢があっていいじゃない。この島をリゾート化するつもりなんでしょ。その工事の途中でひょっこり黄金が見つか
もちろんサインはするお前たちに黄金の分け前75億円分を約束する親父殿の遺産分配の時きれいさっぱり生産することも約束するだが一点だけどうしても譲歩してもらいたい部分があるのだよ何の話だよどの点が気に入らねえってんだ分け前の1割7億5000万円を即納する点だよお前たちの指摘通り私の財政状況は決して裕福ではない数々の先行投資によって未来に必ず回収できると保証されながらも今のこの時点では火の車であることは認めなければならないつまり今すぐに動かせる金は全くないということだ私は無能で詳細の嗅覚も鈍いお前たちの言うところの弱り目の私には7億半も半年で動かせる力はないということだよそ,そんなはずはないでしょいい加減なことを言ってこの場をごまかす気遺産分配時に全て一括で生産する1割を即納する条件を削除したまえ Maybe he is planning on just killing them all and he doesn't even have to give them the 10% up front. He can just keep it all for himself. So, I'm going to sign in the same way. Krauss, you are the one who is 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 the one And for that, I will give you my soul. Hideyoshi had a humble expression on his face and had his hands clasped together, but his eyes were not calm at all. Kraus had already seen through the shadow in the depths of those eyes. よせよ兄貴俺たちは兄貴がサインするかしないかしか聞いてない妙な勘繰りも交渉もなしだ you know he's gonna corner Rose at some point and she's gonna give in because she seems not as definitely not as strong willed as the other ones ほう私には交渉の余地もないと立場が弱いのは私の方で公平な関係ではないとそう言いたいのかね Shivers began to crawl up Rudolph's back. Ever since he was a child, he had never been able to overcome the height of the wall that separated him from his older brother. And now again, he began to feel himself getting sucked in by it, and the long shadow it cast. So, Kraus stared at each of the siblings. They avoided his gaze with animal like instinct. Only Hideyoshi was slow avoiding it, so he was caught in Kraus's gaze. Hideyoshi Nisa, Anata no Kaisha. 非常に好調子だそうじゃないですかトントン拍子で上々を果たし業績も株価も右肩上がり実にお羨ましいことです<笑>うちの人の話は関係ないでしょう。Maybe they all made a deal with Beatrice I don't know <笑>、oh. 株主たちに対する還元を怠ったのが悪かったそして上々した時に足回りを固めきらなかったのもまずかった。Yeah, looks like he's been doing some、uh, studying and some、uh, digging in of his own. 気づいた時には、たちの悪い連中に、自社株をだいぶ買い集められていたらしいじゃないですか
な,なんでそんな話知っとるんや秀吉さんと同じですよ私に融資する人間などいないと裏を取れる程度に私も秀吉さんの裏を取れるのです oh, you know <笑>そんな不思議があることはないじゃないですかクラウス・グリンド・ブロードリー In contrast, Hideyoshi's face was turning obviously pale. Hideyoshi's company was a fast food chain operating company that he had started from nothing. Though Hideyoshi's management, or through Hideyoshi's management efforts, performance of the business repeatedly rose and magnified, and ultimately it succeeded in becoming a stock listed company. The greatest advantage of being in a stock holding system is that, by selling stock, stock certificates, a large amount of financing can be gained. That amount is far greater than the actual profits from the business. This made it an extremely effective way to gather the massive funds needed to grow his company even further. However, in exchange for financing the company, the stockholders have certain rights. Namely, the right to observe and guide the company that they have financed in order to raise its profits above their investment. That right is guaranteed to all stockholders, and they sometimes even use it to reorganize ineffectual m a n s i o n Did Kraus buy. Is Kraus the one who bought up a lot of the stocks? Maybe that's where part of his money was going, and that's how he knew? I don't know. It is the right to prevent the money they have spent financing the company from going to waste by watching the management of the company. However, if they use this right forcefully, forcibly, they can eject the former management and take over the company. Because the general body of all stockholders has the power to dismiss the management and nominate new management. That right is exercised on a majority decision by the stockholders. And people who hold more stock get to cast more votes. In other words, if some person or group holds a majority of the stock, they can freely chase out the old management and make the president anyone they'd like. If they want, it is even possible for them to make themselves president. Many companies, in order to prevent their stock from being bought up by malicious people and their position from being threatened, take some kind of defensive measures, such as having their own employees or people close to them buy a lot of stock certificates in order to prevent a hostile group from securing the majority. However, since Hideyoshi's company had only recently become stock listed, they hadn't had the time to strengthen those defense me defensive measures. No, maybe Hideyoshi himself was so engrossed in the management of his company he hadn't realized the dangers of being stock listed. It's hard to say whether he should be viewed as a kind hearted and skilled manager immersed in management, or a foolish manager who had his feet swept out from under him. But in any case, there were people out there who would not let him get away with that naivete unscathed. They rapidly bought up Hideyoshi's company's stock and instantly gained a significant amount of power. Then they sent anonymous documents to the stockholders and began to capture the majority. Documents read The current management continues to make pointless investments and is ignoring the needs of the stockholders. Let us force the current management to retire, cut the current wasted investments, and let this company be born again as one that gives more back to the stockholders. It's very difficult to make the actual state of a company's management known. They maliciously twisted the figures Hideyoshi had produced from a tiny amount of sleep and a constant concern for his company and made him lose the trust of his stockholders. Poor, poor Hideyoshi, he seems like the nicest one of these, all of all of these people. Her efforts had almost collected a majority of the stock in the company. At that point, even Hideyoshi noticed and started to buy back the stock, but the stockholders, who realized the company was undergoing an acquisition maneuver, demanded a ridiculous price for the shares that Hideyoshi was trying to buy back, and that's why he needs the money so quickly. So now, Kraus can flip it on them and be like, oh, you guys need this money so desperately, so now you're gonna play by my rules. They continuously tortured Hideyoshi, who had no leeway in the negotiation of the price. One of the certainties of capitalism is that value will rise when both parties vie for the same thing. And one of the certainties of democracy is that the majority controls everything. So, in the end, whoever manages to buy up the most stock wins. So, whoever has the most money wins. If Hideyoshi could obtain a large sum of money at this critical time, he would be able to avoid losing all of which he had built up. Therefore, more than anything, he wanted a lot of money right now. He couldn't wait for the division of Kinzo's inheritance, which may not happen for some time. Ludolf's <laughs> home was like in what I can do, so Jamaica may. Kaiga, you are quite to Yoku Yunga. Hontoni Sora Sina. American Saiban was Kiwamet a Kanjo Tekini Kimaru. Karela was Gaiko Jinni Kandaina Hanketz Nado Dashi was Sinai. Sempoto Wakaista Honga Kekyoka Yasangari Naruto. 
弁護士に忠告を受けたんじゃないのかね何の話おおまあ仕事上のトラブルさ、oh, boy, oh boy. 大したことじゃない。Like、金で切りのつく話さ。キュリエ、quickly recognized what Rudolph's complicated expression meant. Her husband had gotten wrapped up in some kind of trouble without her knowledge and been suffering alone. その通りさ、世の中なんだって金で切りがつく。失った兄弟の絆だって買い戻せるようにな。アメリカは権利侵害などにはうるさい国だ。だが金さえあれば何でも和解できる。資本主義万歳だよ。もっとも、和解金は数百万ドルにも及びそうだとの噂もあるがね。ルドフは、building a large amount of wealth with a certain type of niche market. However, a niche is a niche. It's definitely not a sunny job. An American corporate giant was trying to accuse Rudolph's company of violating their rights. For various reasons, it was thought that winning the trial was extremely unlikely, and Rudolph was being pressed to surrender outright. But even so, there was a way to resolve it with money. If he could only pay that money, though it may be painful, he could still pick himself back up. But if he didn't pay, he'd lose everything. Therefore, more than anything else, he wanted a lot of money right now. Oh, even Rosa! Hmm. だがお人よしな性分が災いしたんじゃないか、ね oh, no. 連帯保証人は気安く引き受けるものではないと思うがね。Poor girl, can't catch a break. それはクラス兄さんとは関係ない !Rosa uncharacteristically lay bare her emotions and yelled because she had thought she'd kept it a secret. As Kraus watched, he let it slip a muffled laugh. There was nothing to fear. Every one of them, more than anything else, wanted a lot of money right now. What's A. Well, no, I was gonna say Ava. Ava's. It's Hideyoshi, not Ava, that's the issue. In other words, the situ. I wanna know what, uh, what、uh, Rudolph's niche market is. I like the. I, I wanna know what is it. <laughs> And I wanna know what Rose's thing is about co signing something. In other words, the situation had been reversed. Because only Krauss, who they were threatening, had no urgent need for a large sum of money. Compared to that, the three who were threatening him wanted money quickly, no matter what the cost. So the longer Krauss postponed the deal, the greater the advantage to him. Krauss was very sly. He had known of their Achilles' heel from the beginning. Even so, he had not been certain. Therefore, he had hidden that until the very end, and upon closely and completely examining their attitude, he had struck back. Krauss's elated words were horribly blunt. The other siblings could do nothing more than listen, grinding their teeth. What an awkward dinner this is gonna be! And then the, the kids are gonna not really know what's going on, be like, why is it so tense? If they could think of a sponsor that convenient, they wouldn't have kept up the charade. They'd enter this huge battle specifically because they exhausted all other options. <laughs> Cross's <laughs> low, gloating laugh began to fill the parlor. The younger siblings, who had until then been driving the oldest brother into a corner, could do nothing more than grimace and grind their teeth. Eva! Oh, I bet Natsui wishes she was there to see that. Krauss and Isa were tired. 
チクショ足元見やがってあなた落ち着いて落ち着いてるぜ俺は極めて冷静だぜクソったりがキュリエグラブドハスバンズハンズバタダアクションメイドンフィリーフンモーピタフォーサルドフシュクドフクロスラフトゥゾーシーンダーメイドヒムエクストリームリーハッピーこんな時本当に親父殿の隠し黄金が見つかればいいんだがねそうすればすぐに25億ずつをこの場で切り分けてやれるのだが残念残念残念至極非常に極めて実にどうしようもなく残念だ今宵は兄弟みんなで酒を酌み交わしながら親父殿の隠し黄金をベアトリーチェの碑文の謎をみんなで解き明かしてみようじゃないかね仲良し兄弟が4人揃えばきっと解けない謎はないはずさ<笑><笑>うん。ああ、いや、I forgot about this guy <笑>。面白いことをする。それでその突きつけた条件というのは何か。はい。クラウス様は黄金の発見を通す。Oh, she's got その分け前として。Got him as this little。ルドルフ様。A、little bird watching。計七十五億円を支払うこと。And because he's so like the guy is so quiet and looks so pitiful, people wouldn't even realize he was there。ただしその一割を。3月までに支払うこと<笑>クラウスのマヌケメ弟たちに足をさらわれるとはな実に愉快ではないかしかし爪が甘いようだなはいクラウス様はそれをエヴァ様以下お三人が緊急に大金を用立てする必要があるためと<笑>その程度のことはカンパできるのか中途半端に無能な男め今はどうしている話は一度中断されました今はベアトリーチェ様の碑文の話をされています私の黄金がどこに隠されているのかその謎を解こうとかはい What if、uh, Cannon finds it and him and Shannon and Uh, Kumasawa can just leave and just do their, you know, start their lives anew without being servants and just、uh, maybe live on the island and kick everybody else out, just live their lives. I would be okay with that too. <laughs> Kinzo set down his glasses and snorted. だがもし奇跡の成就が先だったなら先だったなら。ベアトリーチェは再び蘇る私が反省をかけて追い求めたあの美少が蘇るのだおベアトリーチェ<笑> It's like a meme at this point 奇跡を落とす聖なる夜がやってくるぞ悪魔たちとのゲームが始まるぞ私はきっと打ち勝つ絶対に生き残る他の奴らの命はくれてやる。富も名誉も財産も黄金も何もいらぬ。ただお前の微笑みがもう一度見たいだけなのだ。Guys, a little bit of a broken record, isn't he? <笑><笑> Kinzo choked apparently in great pain. 
Cannon got closer and tried to pat his master's back, but Kinzo signaled he didn't need to. ま、その勝者に ベアトリーチェの非分の謎を解いたものには私が築き上げてきた全てを与えよう。I その謎に挑む資格はい。ですが、僕にはあのような難しい謎は分かりかねます。無論だ。何回に作った。だが、お前も挑め。それが我が魔法の奇跡を呼ぶ糧となる。誰もが挑み、誰にも至れなかったらその時はその時。だが奇跡が集い、魔法の力が生まれたならその時こそ。ベアトリーチェが蘇るのだ。だからお前も挑め
a description of it. It was a mechanism that Kinzo, unable to trust his blood relatives, had created to lock himself up in his own study and isolate himself from the outside world. The only ones he could trust now were not the sons who shared his blood, but those servants who called themselves furniture. With a bitter laugh, Nanjo turned to face the door to the parlor. It seemed that because of that motion, Genji understood what Nanjo wanted to say. For the most part, Genji also understood the family's situation. It must have made him want to frown, knowing that right now in the parlor, the master he served was being discussed so disrespectively. But it would have been very difficult to gather that from his indifferent expression. <laughs> Nanjo looked at the portrait of Beatrice. No, he actually directed his gaze beneath the portrait at the plate with the ep epitaph. <laughs> いや、時には理解できない それを理解できたものに財産や家督を追い譲りになられようということなのでしょう。つまり私のような Oh, I think that's a romantic way of viewing it. He literally just wants more people to participate because then it uh, raises the chance of him getting to see Beatrice. <laughs> Seems to be all he cares about. And everyone else is just a pawn. Chess, chess pun, chess pun. Everybody's a pawn in his game. I'm sure that was done on purpose. The whole talk about chess and everything and people just the pieces on the board. If, as Nanjo said, this epitaph had been written to repair the relationship between the siblings, how heartwarming that would be. However, Nanjo and Genji both knew this was the one thing that could never be the case. Here were the two who held the longest relationship with Kinzo, more trusted than his blood relatives, and even they could not guess at Kinzo's true motive. <laughs> なんじょう先生はいかがですか。いやいや。この老いぼれには少々何回が過ぎますな。実は以前この碑文を手帳にしるしましてな。夜な夜な寝る前に挑んでみたのですが。実に難しい。お迎えが来るまでの間ゆっ
You who laid hand upon the key must journey as follows to the Golden Land. On the first twilight, sacrifice the six chosen by the key. Ooh, sacrifice! People are gonna die! And six, that's a lot. On the second twilight, those who remain shall tear apart the two who are close. On the third twilight, those who remain shall praise my noble name. On the fourth twilight, ooh, gouge the head and kill. On the fifth twilight, gouge the chest and kill. On the sixth twilight, gouge the stomach and kill. On the seventh twilight, gouge the knee and kill. On the eighth twilight, gouge the leg and kill. Maybe none of this has to do with killing people, but they're so frenzied to find the gold that they're all willing to do to do that, and they're going to try and kill each other, but maybe the riddle has nothing to do with killing people at all. On the ninth twilight, the witch revives, and none shall be left alive. On the tenth twilight, the journey ends, and you shall reach the home of the gold. The witch shall praise the wise and bestow four treasures. One shall be all of the golden land's gold. One, res uh, one resurrects all the dead people's souls. One even revives all the love they possessed. And one for the witch to eternally rest. Rest in peace, my beloved witch, Beatrice. Oh, that was a tip, I think. Okay. I'll have to check that in a moment. Okay, before we do anything else... Okay, so it's... I mean, this is good for, like, me to go back to a reference point to it as things go on in the story, but for now, I literally just, you know, read that, so... There was a notebook inside the handbag Maria was always carrying around. Beatrice's ep epitaph was copied onto it. Why do I have a feeling that this notebook, uh, you know, when things start happening, Maria's gonna write them down. When, like, shit starts to go down, she's gonna write things down. We're gonna use that as, like, maybe kind of like hints on what's going on or maybe have to use what she's written down to try and solve the mystery. Thanks to that, we were all able to challenge the puzzle of the epitaph while here on this beach. For Jessica and the others, this was a puzzle that they had already tried to solve several times and had already gotten bored with. But it was a first for me, and I was so excited that I couldn't stop. It really tickled my male sense of romance. <laughs> ご興を貫くアユの川。神様の故郷ってどこだっけ？戦前のお城土産は小田原のあたりに屋敷を構えてたって聞いたぜ。で、トマリア小田原に流れてるアユの泳ぐ川に関心が行くわけだろ。まず
下流に出て海に出ると思いますそうさ河口部に出るそして碑文の3行目には川を下ればやがて里ありとあるなちなみにそういう河口部は大抵大昔から輸送の要衝になってて大きな都市があるもんさここが次のチェックポイントだなうんうんなかなかいい筋だねバトラ君の想像通りそこは大昔にとても栄えたことだよ小田原城があるところだねあ修学旅行で小田原城に行った気がします素敵なお城でしたよああ私も小田原城だったぜ洋館に住んでてなんだがやっぱり日本人は和風の方が落ち着くよなおおマリアお城退屈遊園地がいいほうそうかそうかよしよし黄金を見つけたらこのバトラ様が気前よく<笑>遊園地を一日借り切って遊ばせてやるぜえー、しかし小田原城の隠し黄金おっこりゃなんだかいかにもって感じだよな<笑>まあ2年前の私たちもそこまでは行き着いたぜ小田原でアユの泳ぐ川を下った里そこが多分小田原城あたりだろうってところまでは私たちも行き着いたさ This part seems normal it's the part after about the whole thing about like Oh boy, I already forgot what it was. Something about、uh, on this night,、uh, three people will die, or like, do you take the head, you take the legs? That's when it starts to get a little messy. Oh, is this what Jessica's bringing up here? Jessica grinned broadly. It was like she was saying that if the puzzle could be solved so easily, she would have found it long ago. Damn it. I'll definitely find it and keep it all for myself. Four g i r l その里にて2人が口にし岸を探れ2人ってのが何のことかわからねえがとにかく岸だなで岸ってなんだようーん岸って名前がつく地名でもあるのかなえっと蘇我岸という地名が小田原にあるんだそうですよえっおお詳しいなってことはなんだよシャノンちゃんも黄金を狙って謎解きに挑戦してるんだなとなりゃ俺たちはライバルだぜべ別に黄金なんて興味はただその以前にジョージ様から教えてもらっただけで2年前の私たちも同じ推理に行き着いたってわけさわざわざ地図を広げて調べたんだぜ小田原城の北に5キロくらいだったかなそこには確かに蘇我岸という地名があるよでもそこからがわからないんだ次の5行目にはその土地のどこに鍵があるかは記してないマリアちゃん読んでくれるかい It's gotta be in relation to that, the two. Whatever the two refers to. おおそこに黄金橋への鍵が眠るうん読めた蘇我岸ったって広いだろうしかつてそこに後宮家の家があったわけでもないその広大な土地のどこかに鍵が隠されてて納品取ってんじゃこいつはお手上げってわけだぜ確かにな鍵が手に入らないことにはその先の行に進めないぜジョージ兄貴蘇我岸ってのはどんなとこなんださあね行ったことはないからわからないけど地図によると山の中みたいだよ確か浅間山の山麓みたいだったねうーんなんだかパッとしねえな宝のありかを隠した謎ってのはもっとぴったりとハマるもんじゃねえのかよどうも蘇我岸ってのがそもそも間違いって気がするぜ私は蘇我岸を疑ってるぜ私たちが知らないだけで例えばじいさまの子供時代を過ごした家とかがあるかもしれないだろ一行目に「懐かしき故郷」って行があるくらいだもんなシャノンはじいさまによく酒とか継がされてたろ昔話とか聞かされたことないのか親方様は昔の話はほとんどされませんただ後宮家が滅びかけた
関東大震災について非常に人事ごとのように話されることがありましたので関東地方よりずっと遠方にお住まいだったかもしれません後宮本家は小田原に住んでたかもしれないけど分家はその限りじゃなかったろうねおじい様はよく自分のことを「分家も分家跡継ぎに最も縁遠かった」と言われるくらいだからねってことはつまり懐かしき故郷ってのがすでに小田原じゃない可能性もあるってことだなじい様の故郷なんて聞いたこともないぜ聞いても素直に教えちゃくれねえだろうしよ懐かしき故郷というのが後宮家のルーツを指さないのであれば小田原説は初めから間違ってることになっちゃうねもちろん蘇我騎士の疑いが晴れたわけじゃないけれども例えば幼少の頃を小田原で過ごしその後遠方へ引っ越した可能性もあるだろうしおおさっきから何の話かわかんないおおマリアは完全に考えたマリアは完全に考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを考えたことを鍵なんてなくても扉はぶち壊して入ることだってできるはずだぜとりあえず最初の5行をすっ飛ばしてその先の推理に入ってもいいんじゃねえかおおその発想はなかったぜまあいいやどうせ暇つぶしなんだ続きを聞かせろよバッでもその先からが急に物騒になるんですよ、ね oh, yes, I, I <笑>シャネンチェンフラウンサイトリー After looking back at Maria's notebook to recall what was written there, I agree. Dai Chino Bani Kagino Erabishi Rokunin O Ikeni Eni Sasageo Ikinari Bussoni Narna Dai Nino Baniwa Yoriso Ftario Hiki Saketo Kitamunda Koinakao Hadan Saserunoka Mojidori Hiki Sakto Yu Imi Nanoka I wonder if tear apart the two who are close, if we're not talking about family, maybe it's、uh, Shannon and、uh, Cannon. But the thing is, when did he have this thing written? Was it when those two were working there? I, need, I know Shannon's been working there for a long time, but like, I can't remember when did they say Can Cannon started working there. Or maybe it's something completely different. Look at me, I'm like them, I'm trying to figure it out too. I don't <laughs> その第二の番の解釈を別にしても第一の番に6人第四の番から第八の番までで5人少なく見積もっても11人が生贄にえにされなきゃならない Maybe tear apart the two who are close Maybe that has nothing to do with people at all おおベアトリーチェがよみがえるための生贄にえなるほど魔女復活のための生贄にえかそういう解釈にもなるなその結果第9の番に魔女がよみがえって最後は極めつけだな第9の番に魔女はよみがえり誰も生き残れはしない結局はみんな死んでしまいますそれでようやく次の第10の番にゴールってことになってんなみんな死んじまうのに黄金鏡へ至るだろうって言われても困ったもんだぜ鍵を手に旅に出た当人も生き残れないに含めるのかどうかは解釈の分かれるところだねしかしよ最後のところには面白いことが書いてあるぜゴールした後魔女からもらえる4つの宝の行だよ一つは全ての黄金問題は次だ全ての死者の魂をよみがえらせるとあるぜみんな死んじまったってっていうのとかけてるような気がしねえかそれを言われれば次の失ったアイスラもよみがえらせる第二の番の寄り添いし二人を引き裂けにかけているようにも見えますねそうだねそして四つ目も第九の番にかけてある第九の番によみがえった魔女を四つ目の宝が再び眠りにつかせている好意的に解釈すりゃ死んだり別れさせたりと忙しいが最後には全部チャラになるわけだな。Let's hope so. Maybe just like Higurashi, maybe everything will just be okay in the end. So just gonna be a lot of、uh, 
sadness and uh, and horrible things happening in between, but everything will be okay in the end. Or maybe not, maybe it's gonna subvert it and everything will just stay horrible. <笑>やれやれ。せっかくの隠し黄金の話も魔女の話が絡んじまうと急にうさんくさくなっちまうぜ。違いないな。I laughed along with Jessica. After all, a witch is just ridiculous. Of course, once we started laughing like that, Maria, who believed in witches, got angry. Jessica apologized, sticking out her tongue, but Maria didn't accept it. She grabbed her notebook back out of my hands and opening to the other pages, tried to prove that witches existed. Those pages had colored illustrations of witches drawn on them, and conveyed the fantastical image Maria had of witches well. They were not depicted as the normal, sinister, crooked-nosed hags flying around on brooms, but as dreamlike people with mysterious powers who could do anything and wore beautiful dresses. Just like what you would expect from an imaginative young girl. So, that was my thing when I talked about, um, uh, when, uh, Kenzo, in, like, calling her a witch after all the things she apparently did for him, and I said, witches tend to have a negative connotation, but I'm thinking from a Western point of view. Like, calling someone a witch is seen as a negative thing, and that's probably from, you know, like, the uh, Western tends to be more of, like, a Christian, uh, you know, like, imagery of things. Where, of course, you know, other, um, societies and other cultures, it could be different. So that was kind of my Western, uh, take on it, but, yeah. Dancing through the sky, crossing a rainbow, dancing around all night with magical teacups and teapots that would never get empty no matter how much you poured out of them. With a flourish of their wands, the stars in the sky would become candy and pour down, and flowers that produce sweets would bud by the roadside. To Maria, witches were the sole thing that could, for could give form to the magical dreams that so captivated her. The last thing enriching her reality, which revealed more and more of its bland nature to her with every inch she grew. That was why Maria believed in witches. She didn't want that dream to be insulted. And for that very reason, nor did she want the epi epitaph which affirmed the existence of witches to be insulted. Because the witch Beatrice is Maria's dream. Maria-chan ni totte wa, kore wa ougon no kakushi basho o shimesu mono jya nakute. Maybe if Beatrice uh, is revived, maybe she'll take over Maria's body. And then we won't expect it, because it's this cute little girl, little innocent girl, and then maybe she'll start killing people. Majo o yomigai raseru tame no mahou nan da te. So it was the single bridge between Maria and the witch. Maria was very angry and clung onto George Aniki. Jessica and I scratched our heads and apologized. It might not be possible to smooth things over again like the time she got mad in front of the portrait. Maria didn't want to be easily consoled. As Jessica and I hung our heads, wondering what we could do, Shen and Chan timidly opened her mouth in our place. Ano, Maria sama, gozonji desu ka? Watashitachi shiyongin no aida dewa. ベアトリーチ様の階段が語り継がれているんですよ。ああ、そうだったっけ。シャドン、聞かせてやれよ。私は知らないんだけど、使用人の間じゃかなり有名な話らしいぜ。何の話だ階段うん。僕たちが生ま
At some point, this ghost story naturally sprouted up between the servants. つけたはずの明かりがついていたり、捨てたはずの明かりが消えていたり、置いたはずのものがなくなっていたり、置いた覚えのないものが置かれていたり、そういうことがある度に古い使用人たちは魔女が姿を消して親しきを訪れ、い
For a while, she continued to take out various pieces of junk, although they were probably important magical items to her, and repeatedly throw them back in, saying they were wrong. She looked a little humorous, almost like Santa Claus deliberating over which present to give. Finally, it seemed she had excavated what she was looking for. With a face unimaginably brighter than the difficult expression she had worn until now, she stuck them out to Jessica and me. <laughs> As I reached out to grab it, I noticed it was a very cheap-looking charm. It looked like a bracelet made from a plastic rosary, with a scorpion motif metal attached. I mean, you often find cheap accessories that correspond to the constellations. It felt like a gift you might win in the crane game in an arcade. It really looked like something like that. There were two. Probably one for me, and one for Jessica. However, considering the odd fact that there were two of them, they looked like cheap manufactured goods, and it was quite hard to think of them as magical items. これを私のバトラに。はい。このままになら、ベアタリーチャも大丈夫。サソリは魔除けの力があるから。ああ、そうなのか。サソリにそんな力がね。ふふ。バトラが信じない。ふふ。I had inflamed Mari again because I had said too much. Maria took out her notebook again and turned and pointed to page after page, going on and on about how the scorpion had holy power and had been drawn on magic-repelling magic circles since ancient times. Hmm, I don't know if uh, Shannon is playing along or if the servants really do seem to be into black magic as well. It seems like a lot of information, especially with them not having the internet, like to know about. Or maybe they just heard it from Maria years before because uh, she just seems to ramble on about it, so she's just, you know, appeasing her. I really wanted to make fun of this worthless looking charm, but as I watched Mari explaining the charm with all of her heart and realized she'd prepared them out of consideration for us, it felt as though even if it were just a prize from a game center, it would still be beneficial. Material quality isn't what's important about charms, it's the strength of the feelings behind them. I'd like to think I have enough respect for myself not to make fun of those. Pretty sure if you did, she'd never forgive you. There'd be no charm in the world to protect you from Mari. Beatrice様には謝ったけどよ。万が一タタリがある時でも、マリアのこのお守りのおかげで安心だぜ。ま、ジェシカ。ああ、そうだぜ。ありがとうな、マリア。はい、心に平安が欲しい時は腕につける。お財布に入れるとお金が減らなくなる。ドアノブにかけておくと悪いものが入ってこられなくなる。便利なお守り。それはすごい効能ですね。マリア様が自信を持って進めるお守りなら、きっと頼もしいものと思います。Ashen tapped her hands together lightly. Maria stuck out her chest. She was completely cheered up again. If it would keep her in this good of a mood, it would probably be worth it to let Maria lead the discussion for a will If it would keep her in this good of a mood, it would probably be worth it to let Maria lead the discussion for a while longer. When you think about it, she hasn't shared in our excitement when we talked about the gold's hidden location, so I think she had gotten a little bored. While eating the cookies Kumasawa-san had baked, Jessica and I asked Maria this and that about black magic. Maria happily chatted away in response to our questions. For each one, George Aniki and Shannon Chan would act surprised and agree with everything she said. The color of the clouds in the sky grew progressively heavier, but the cousins really enjoyed communicating freely after one year of separation. As George Aniki rubbed his forehead, he looked up at the sky. Considering the color of the sky and the dampness of the air, raindrops could easily have started falling down at any moment. It also seemed like the wind had gotten a little stronger. Maria, 
そろそろ引き上げた方がいいかな。シャネチャン looked down at her watch. It may have already been well into the evening. もう仕事に戻る時間かよ。はい、皆様と一緒で楽しい時間を過ごさせていただきました。ありがとうございました。熊沢さんにクッキーをごちそうさまって伝えてね。さあみんな、片付けを手伝おう。シャネンチャン declined our help, saying that was a servant's job. But picking up a dropped fork before the, matri- before the waitress has to is like my purpose in life. Oh, v a l o r you're sweet, but a little perverted, and you say some weird shit, but you're sweet. We folded up the blanket. They're all sweet. We folded up the blanket, gathered up the trash, and helped clean everything up. So, it's a nigga, son, is it? Maria, you're a sucking, you're a sucking, you're a sucking. To Maria, chasing after some trash that the strong winds had sent flying was just like an extension of our playtime. By the time we finished cleaning up, the wind had started blowing very strongly. It looked like a good chance to head back. <laughs> もう本当に時間がないみたいだね。先に戻っていいよ。ジョージ・アニキ、プロセッフォーム・ハリー・アピアンス、ゲンジさん、時間には厳しい人だからな。定時に持ち場についてないと厳しそうだぜ。また、後でね。お仕事、頑張ってね。<笑>はい。それでは、失礼させていただきます。After making a respectful bow, Shannon Chan hurried off in the direction of the Rose Garden. ほんじゃ俺たちもゲストハウスへ戻ろうぜテレビでも見てくつろがせてもらうさおいテレビ見るテレビ見るおいなら決まりだな戻ってみんなで一緒にテレビでも見ようぜ Must be nice for these guys having no idea just how stressed out their parents are just getting into a whole like you know tussle about the money and all that stuff They're completely just oblivious to it Even Maria who was not tired of playing agreed when she thought about watching TV We headed up the gentle stairs and returned to the Rose Garden. The, the wind had become very strong, and roses shook throughout the garden like ripples on water. This might be our last chance to see these beautiful roses. Tonight's typhoon is sure to ruin them. Bara, Konya no Kaze de Yarachimau k a m s h i r e n a i na. So da no. Bara da chimo, lucky da ta to moze. 台風の前にバトラたちを歓迎できたんだからよ。花はいつか必ず散る。でも、だからこそ、咲き誇る今をめでることができるんじゃないかな。そうだな。マリアもよく目に焼き付けとけ。今、この瞬間が、今年で一番のバラなんだぜ。うーん、目に。Right then, Maria suddenly clapped her hands. Oh, is it about that flower from before? The rose that was like all wilted. It looked like she had remembered something. Maria no bara. Taifu de toba se le chao. Huh. Oh. Georgie no aniki ni mejirishi no ribbon o tsuke te moratta. Ano. It seemed that Maria remembered where the rose was. She ran at full speed. The rest of us followed her. We searched everywhere around that area, but after all, it was only a single flower amongst all of these roses. Even though we knew it was somewhere close by, it wasn't proving easy to find. The winds, had made up, the winds that made up the front line of the typhoon were making the roses throughout the garden undulate. It was almost as if it was teasing us by making the location of Maria's rose impossible to find. <laughs> These are, I gotta say, these are good cousins. I was like, it's just such a,、um, such a small thing, like her wanting to find this rose, and they're all just like, all right, we're gonna help her out because it matters to her. I could see, like, when I was little, my older cousins would do something like this. Like, you think they'd be like, oh, you know, it's like, we're teenagers, we're too cool for this to help this little girl find a rose, but they're all, like, into it. What? What's Mario? As we made to split up and search, Maria tugged on my jacket with an unhappy face. It felt like her intention was to stop us from going to another place. What's 
でも弦にないぜこの花壇の裏側だったかもなみんなで探せば早いぜはあここなのマリアのバラはここなの探して探してはあ Well, little temper tantrum Maria stomped her feet in irritation She was pointing at the spot, saying it was definitely there, yet it actually wasn't. And yet, if we went to go search elsewhere, she got mad. We were at a loss for what to do. For a while, we would have to stay with Maria, and pretend to search through the rose thicket. <sighs> Maybe she's saying it should be here, but it isn't. Maria became increasingly ill tempered. <laughs> Just as we were starting to despair for a way out of the situation, Maria shouted out loudly. In the direction she was waving her hand, Auntie Rose's figure was visible. Maybe she wanted to look at the garden one more time before the typhoon came, or maybe she had some business at the guest house. Auntie Rosa was coming from the mansion. She quickly noticed her daughter's voice and came over. マリアのバラってこの辺に元気のないバラを一つ見つけてそれに目印をつけたんです飴玉かなんかの包み紙でキュッと<笑>しかしマリア確か俺の記憶が正しけりゃすぐ手前の目立つところに生えてたはずだぜ足が生えてどこかに行っちまったんじゃなきゃ他の場所だったと思うぜマリアの記憶違いじゃないのか oh boy, I feel like he just said the wrong thing there. その、うう、言うのをやめなさいって何度言ったらわかるのロサ、I'm I was a little surprised to see Auntie Rosa, who I'd only ever seen as gentle, get angry. Auntie Rosa began searching as well, so we went along with her for the time being. But we were already more than sure it wasn't around here. And so Auntie Rosa also realized very quickly that it wasn't here. <sighs> ああ、バイエーズ。ちゃんと信じて探してるでしょ。でもないじゃない。ああ。でもここなの。ここにあるのにないの。じゃあ誰かが抜いちゃったんでしょ。とにかくそのうう言うのやめなさい。おう。ああ
When Maria realized her wish was being rejected before it could be fulfilled, she started yelling with an increasingly louder voice. It's almost like this ooing, like it's it's almost like a tick she has or something, she can't help herself. Oh. Damn, oh my gosh. Oh boy, from Rose's point of view, I can kind of see, like, she's, you know, the youngest sibling, she gets picked on, and she has this kid that she's like, I don't know what's wrong with you, why are you so different from, why can't you be normal, but this is not the way to go about it. Once again, her palm slapped Maria's cheek. Wow. This time, she didn't go silent. She choked as she started crying and began to bawl in an increasingly louder voice. Auntie Rosa was clearly irritated and lifted her hand once more to try and shut her daughter up. <laughs> I attempted to intervene with a forced smile and my hands collapsed together. But the uh, deadly serious look I was thrown by Auntie Rosa taught me quickly I shouldn't butt in. <sighs> and then there's also Maria's, uh, like, her obsession with little things like George said and her obsession with black magic and witches and things like that is that just I'm like what's up with this girl there's something with this girl right like we need to keep an eye on her It's like, I know it's annoying, but then again, you gotta think, like, we're only dealing with her, with Maria, for a little while. Rosa has to deal with this all the time, and she's probably... She's probably at her wit's end, I imagine. And I don't know what the deal is with, like... Like, Maria's obviously this child that... I don't know if they know, like, she's separated from the father. Does she know who the father of Maria is? And Maria's a little bit of, like... I don't know. Uh, what did uh, Kenzo say? Something like... That Maria was... He insulted her. I can't remember what he said about Maria, but maybe she's like a secret shame of the family. Maybe... Maybe the father ran off or something and Rosa's gotta like raise her as a single mother and she's just having a hard time of it. I don't know. Oh, oh. Auntie Rosa once again raised her hand and overrun by emotion slapped Maria's cheek. It was so strong it knocked Maria over. Hey, <laughs> Rosa-oma-san. いくら娘でも... Good guy, Badler. Look at him. He's the only one stepping in and saying something. I step between them to protect Maria, who's still on the ground, crying. Ooh, ooh. I know problems between parent and child are none of my business as an outsider. But I wasn't brought up to just silently observe something like this. There you go. Good guy. Good guy. <sighs> She's like, you don't deal with it day in, day out, like I do. It seemed by reckless words it brought Auntie Rose's wrath down upon me. Poor Badler can't say anything without someone getting on his case about it. She grabbed my collar with a terrifying expression. 
バカ言ってんじゃないわよわおマリアがいくつか知ってる9歳よ小学4年生なのよ幼稚園児じゃないのよそれなのにまだクラスでうーうー言ってるのよ It's, it's almost like they flip it, like with Higurashi, where the girls would have, have things they'd say, like Reda would you know, have her things that she'd like, I'd take you home.、Uh, especially Rika. Rika saying, like, Nipa. And I think she is even older than,、uh, as old or older than Mari is, but everyone just thought it was very cute. This is flipping it on its head and being like this little girl who has this little saying she has, like we expect from these games. But now it's being shown as like there's something wrong with her, and it's something that needs to be corrected. Wow. Auntie Rosa struck Mari's quivering head from which an increasingly unsatisfied voice was rising. I tried to stop her, but she thrust me away. My back collided with Georgia and Nikki. If what I said before was true and、uh, Mari is going to be possessed by Beatrice, or she has favor with Beatrice because she believes so strongly in witches,、uh, maybe,、uh, maybe Rose is going to go. Maybe she's going to kill off her own mother. Mukashiwa, Rosa Oba Samo, Maria Chan, no Yoji Kotoba, no Hitosa da Kurai Nishka, Omoana Katan Dagado, Shogako, no Chugakne, Natamo Naurana, no Sakima, Daibu Kinishete. Betsni. どういうことわずかいをしようとかそのまま社会人にはなれないよだから見ていて気持ちのいい光景ではないけれどこれは、wow. おばさんたち親子の問題なんだよ Damn George what a what's the word I'm thinking of like I spoken like a true businessman right he's just he's thinking about like in proper society people don't talk like that so she needs to get better And then Badler is like coming more from an empathetic point of view, being like, Yeah, you also don't hate your kid. If you look at it that way, maybe an outsider shouldn't interfere with this, even though it's painful to watch. Badler, you know, when I was a kid, 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 人前でずっと怒られてた時は恥ずかしくてたまらなかったぜじゃあ今のマリアちゃんたちの気持ちはわかるよね僕たちにここにいてほしいとは思わないんじゃないかなジェシカちゃんにもわかるよね怒られてるところを誰かに見られてとは思わないぜ行こうゲストハウスへ戻ろうそしてマリアちゃんが戻ってきたら何事もなかったかのように迎えてあげようよ。AK、sweep it under the rug。それが、一番じゃないかい。Ugh. And I'm like, this happens in the real world too. Nobody wants to make waves. So it's just like, if, even if you know something's happening and there's like some family issues going on, even child abuse, it's like, some people, especially I imagine higher societies, would be like, oh, we don't want to. It's all about appearances, so we won't say anything and we're just gonna let it continue. We thought that George Aniki's point was probably correct. And if we could use that correct sounding reason to justify our retreat from this painful scene, that was probably enough for us. Jessica and I nodded at George Aniki. We all left. We called towards Mari. We were going to head back to the guest house. But since it didn't seem to reach her ears, we felt guilty and shameless even saying that. <sighs> Like, it does seem like this Maria h a v e some sort of like a、uh, speech thing because she repeats words.、Uh, they said before about how、um, she said about how mom told, tells me to write things down so I don't forget. And then the, the, the repetition of the ooh is like there's something with Maria, right? Like, there's something there. <laughs> 
But what you could do instead of hitting your kid, and maybe she's done it already, is maybe go to a speech therapist and work on that, you know, like, constructively. <laughs> After blasting her with those last few words, Rosa spun on her heels and quickly returned to the mansion. Man, Rosa was one of my favorites. I was like, she's like a normal, cool, calm, collected, she's seen the voice of reason. But people aren't one-dimensional, you know? It's like they have, they're have they not perfect, they have faults. Maria probably viewed that as a cold, hurtful gesture. But from Rosa's perspective, that was not her intention. It was because the hand which she had so emotionally struck Maria's cheek with was still numb. It was because if she stayed there screaming, she might again be taken over by her emotions and continue slapping her ch daughter's cheek over and over. After Rosa left, only Maria was left in the rose garden, all alone. The wind began to blow stronger and stronger, and every once in a while a raindrop would fall on her forehead. However, Maria couldn't leave that place, not until she found that poor, wiltering rose. It had definitely been there, and yet, it wasn't there. Even though she knew the place, and even though this was it, it wasn't there. Maria, while bitterly staring at the place it was supposed to be, thought frantically, Maybe the angle I'm looking from is wrong. Maybe the height I'm looking from is wrong. While gazing at a single point, Maria repeatedly changed her position and continued to stare. The wind was getting increasingly stronger, but Maria kept on looking for that rose in front of the flower bed. Kinzo noticed the sound of the raindrops beating on the window. It had finally started to rain. It had begun later than the weather report had predicted. Kinzo, as if being summoned by the sound of the rain, approached the window. The sound of the rain is a sound of silence. That sound feels quieter than any silence, and makes humans remember that in the end, they are alone from when they are born to when they die. <laughs> I was gonna say, if Beatrice comes back and Maria has, like, and maybe takes Maria's body, I feel like her mother might, uh, might not survive. She might be taking her aggression out on her mom, for her mom, you know, doing that to her. Were those words directed at the rainy sky? No one could be seen in the direction of Kinzo's gaze. Oh, here we go. I feel like the stuff's gonna be happening soon. この島は現世より切り離されたもう誰も私の儀式の邪魔をすることはできぬお前にふさわしい生贄は十分にあるぞ息子たちが四人その伴侶が三人孫たちが四人 Who was it? It was um one of the kids couldn't make it. They're probably very happy to not be there. Um, oh boy, I'm trying to remember which kid. So one of the girls, apparently, one of the cousins who was sick or something and uh, was like vomiting and wasn't able to make it to the uh, to the meeting, is probably so happy to not be here.運命の鍵は悪魔のルーレットに従い生贄を選ぶであろうそのルーレットが私を選ぶならば私すらもお前の生贄となるだがだからこそなのだそれだけの狂気をかけるからこそ私は必ずや偉大な奇跡を起こす
さあ来たれベアトリーチようこそ我が宴私が生み出した全ての引き換えに私にもう一度だけ奇跡を見せておくれ<laughs> おーおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおうん、そして、その話の終わりは、この宴会が始まるので、私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。私は期待しています。